Hey guys, you're listening to Jared and Kyle with the South Cat Syndicate Podcast. On today's episode, we went to the YouTube comment section. Oh boy. So uh, we go through the comments, not so much the good ones, but mostly the bad ones. So stay tuned. It gets kind of interesting. Hey, this is Liz, and you're listening to the South CAC Syndicate Podcast. That's so funny. What's up? Kyle Voss in the house. Jared here. All right, listen, you've got us in a rare, a rare, rare mood. mood today. Rare mood. Uh, it's a little bit rainy in the beautiful city of Wahala, South Carolina at the I'm, studio. I'm already crying. Oh, God, <clears throat> don't be sad. Be glad. So, we kind of tossed around a bunch of ideas. Um, I had a scheduling conflict, actually. It was me. I just dropped the ball. Thought I had a guest for this week, and I don't. It's actually next week that he was scheduled. So we kind of we kind of tried to hurry up, get a guest last minute. We talked about doing the whole influencer thing that we talked about last last episode. Uh, we shot around some ideas about talking about some of the what do you call them uh, abbreviations used uh, in yeah. investing in real estate, you know, mm-hmm. the, the EBITDAs, the more NOIs, of, more the, of an educational course. We thought that'd be a little, yeah. a little too boring. We may do it at some point and try to bring it back. But you know, one of the things that Jared and I realized, or at least me, is that in a lot of these conversations we have about, you know, businesses or, or real estate or whatever it is, we say stuff like, yeah, we signed an NDA or, um, I sent an I, LOI. I sent an LOI or I, or, or what's the ROI? Yeah, or you know, um, you know, all kinds of of lingo that we kind of take for granted that people may know, and it's really bad on our part because the whole idea of this podcast is try to educate folks and bring folks in, provide value, provide value, and you know, we're not trying to like exclude people that may not know what these are. So we were actually going to do a whole podcast just talking about you know what these abbreviations are and what they mean. There's not a ton of them, but there is a list. So anyway, came in literally, what, an hour ago. That's yeah. what we were going to do. No, I didn't like the idea. And Jared's like, I'm just not feeling it, man. He's like, I'm in a mood today. I'm in too good of a mood. I, I want to have some fun. So, so so Kyle said, well, let's have some fun. So what he did was we pulled up our YouTube channel, South Cax Syndicate, on YouTube. And he said, you got to read these comments, dude. They're terrible. Well, yeah. You know, you know the, what was it? The, what show was, had the mean tweets? Is that, Jimmy Kimmel or something? Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember. One of those late night shows has a series yeah. called Mean Tweets, and they make them read. So we're going to address some of our favorite mean. negative comments here. And, and thank you for watching on YouTube. Podcasts are made to listen to, but we do stream them for your office pleasure, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, now, before we start, I want to kind of preface this on the fact that, uh, you know, with, f- filming it was kind of an extra thing for us. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea was to get this out audio wise. I mean, even myself, I will watch a podcast ish. Yeah. Like I'm basically listening to it on YouTube, I'm not really watching it. It does kind of give me a little context when I can see the person that's sitting there, which is what I like. But I'm not like watching every detail. You know, it's not like a movie. No, it's because we have faces for radio. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. So there you go. So we're going to read off some of these uh, comments. Some of them are not necessarily mean. Maybe no. just something we want to address. And we encourage all constructive criticism. That's right. Hey. And if you love what you're seeing and watching, comment. If you see it on Instagram, comment. If you, if you don't hate, like it. If you hate what we're doing. Comment. Thanks for watching. Please comment. Tell us how bad we are. Thank you. We really want to know that. Because <laughs> okay. we don't know already. All we right. Do. We do. So the first short, uh, and these, some of these are on our long videos. Some of these are on our shorts. But uh, the first video we were talking. What was the comment? Was this the you? This is whoever from, calls the meeting. Yep. Yeah, okay. that was the video. Whoever calls the meeting pays for the lunch or dinner or whatever it was. Yep. So I'm terrible with pronouncing names, but at John Kashed says, this sounds like you punish the productive, creative people and reward the less passionate people. But I get it. Yeah. Well, the comment that Kyle had typed back to John Kashed was we aren't talking in the context of a company. This was more based on, let's say, a real estate agent called a meeting with a real estate developer. The agent has more to gain in the way of potential listings and should pay for the lunch or dinner because the developer is taking time out of his day to take the meeting. Yeah. That is that is basically the context of whoever calls the meeting yeah. pays for the meeting. We're not. Th- I guess what I and I get why 
<clears throat> there may be some confusion. You got to think about in the context of how me and Jared operate. We don't work within co- corporations. Me and him don't work for the same person. If me and him work for the same person and I was in, you know, in the social media side and he was in the development side and I called a meeting because there were some things I needed to get, I needed him to get done, then it wouldn't make sense for me to pay the, pay for it because I'm trying to get something done, which is, I think, what he's kind of talking about. We're talking about in like the private sector. We're talking about Jared is hitting somebody up random, not random, obviously knows him, but like, sure, just someone else, another, you know, uh, a real estate agent. That's right. You're not an agent. You don't sell, you don't, you buy some stuff, but you're not in that industry necessarily. Mm -hmm. You're hitting up an agent because you think you might have a pocket list and you might be interested in, or you're hitting up. Uh, you're taking your... Let's grab a lunch. Got some things to talk about it. Yeah. If I say, let's grab a lunch, I'm paying for lunch. Yeah. If you say, let's grab a lunch, you should pay for lunch. Yeah. And the and the thing is, the, the way we kind of talked about that was, you know, if I feel like Jared has, if there's something that he's, he has some some info on something, a pocket listing, some information on a, a new building, a business, or if I just need feedback, if I think I'm, if I'm going to start a new business and I want to get his feedback... And I'm like, Jared, hey, let's do let's do lunch today. I got some things I want to talk to you about. I'm taking time out of his day. Like he has to schedule me in his, in his book, right? For me, he only answers my calls, let alone meet me for lunch, Charlie. Whatever. So it, it just makes sense for me to pay for that because I got things to do. Yeah. Not that he wouldn't want to eat lunch with me, but somebody's got to pay for it. I mean, I guess you can split the split the bill, but I mean, hell, if it's a meeting that you have no interest in, and you're like, "Dude, what are you talking about? This is stupid." Yeah, good tacos. Thanks for the mimosa. Yeah, I'm out. Pieces, pieces. Okay, next one would be this is the video of authenticity and ownership, and I think we we're talking about bourbon, bourbon and beer, and uh, this. Some of these aren't negative; these are just questions, maybe. No, I think in the context of this too, we had mentioned that a lot of that stuff is not American owned anymore. That's right. So that bad guy, 4189 said, didn't AB go foreign a decade ago? Yeah. AB would be Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch. And I think it did in 2008, 2008 for like 50 billion. Yeah. It was sold to InBev, which is a British UK something company. It's yeah. not in and the then US. 260, 2016, that company bought Saab Miller for a hundred billion, mm-hmm. uh, based out of London. Now we still call it American beers, right? But they control it. They control it. But yep. they, uh, I have been to uh, the Anheuser Busch factory in St. Louis, and if you haven't been yourself, I would encourage you to hop yeah. a plane and land there at uh, Lambert Field and take an Uber over there. It is quite the setup. Now, this is what I'll say about the whole situation. Not necessarily a not an AB fan because, you know, think of it as AB is like the U.S. version of InBev, right? Mm-hmm. So it's all owned by somebody outside the country. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Not currently, not really an AB fan. Um, but I will say in their defense, I mean, it is they have a separate CEO that runs what happens in this in the U.S., mm-hmm. whether that's good or bad. You know, lo- late, lately it's hadn't been that great for them. So it's not like you got somebody – outside the country running what's going on inside the country. Now I've always been a fan of craft local support, local, the guys that are mixing that stuff and that's right. Brewing the, I've always been a fan of that. And I think on that podcast, I talked about, I hate it when like, you know, AB comes along and Isaac Bush comes along and buys up the wicked weeds of uh-huh. the world. Yep. Cause that's what happened. They went on a buying spree for their, for a little right. bit. when craft got popular, they were buying them all up. And I hate that because I'm like, it's not craft anymore. Craft means like four guys in their mm-hmm. in their yeah. uh, garage are making beer. That's craft to me. AB buys it up. I don't care what the name is. I don't care what the mash bill is, what kind of beer they're brewing. It's not craft anymore. Right? No, that's right. Um, a sidebar here. I went to a little town called Hayesville, North Carolina this weekend. Really cool brewery up that way called Nocturnal Brewing. You know what's funny about that? What? You were right across the street from uh, Cutworm Specialties. What? Yes, that's that square. Yeah, he's on the other side of that square. Shut up. Yeah, be uh, not be uh, 
Jeb Greenstone yeah. has, a, has his shop right across that square. Dude, that's awesome. I love that square. I love Hayesville, North Carolina. Yep. And uh, we had dinner right across the street, or kind of across the street from Nocturnal at the Copper Door. Did you, So in Nocturnal, did you see that huge sliding door? I yeah, did. He made that. You know what's funny is I was looking at the hardware, and I said, that looks like something Kyle would cut out of his shop because yeah. it was – it was a heavy door. Yeah. But uh, cool little town, Hayesville, North Carolina. It's probably a 30-minute drive uh, outside of Hiawassee, Georgia. Yep. You're right there on the state lines where everything kind of comes together. But I really drove around that block twice, and I was like, well, that's an empty building. Yeah. <laughs> that's an empty building. So I, I think like, I may. I might buy that. I, I may go that. take another ride up to Hayesville, North Carolina. It looks like a pretty cool town with a, a good council on their shoulders that make wiser decisions. I think I think Jeb's in the know. I don't know if he I don't, he may have the same issues with council. We may head up there and do a meeting. Go see Jeb one day. Yeah, that'd be fun. We'll see if there's an Airbnb or something up there. Okay, this one was about uh, unleashing the power of passion and business. And again, not so much of a funny negative or anything like that. But uh, CFC 1523 says, "Well, you need." Oh, give me the context of the short. What was the? What was the? Unleash, unleash the power of business. Let me read the comment. Yeah. Well, you need money. No. Oh, people. I know what it was. All right. What was you, the you were saying? <clears throat> you were saying I don't need to have an MBA. Oh, that's right. I'll just hire somebody that has an MBA. That's exactly right. Yeah. I don't need an MBA. So I can like, hire four MBAs. I think in this particular podcast we were talking about education and you know how, how having an MBA may educate you in the way of business, but it doesn't make you the best business person. That's right. And you're like, yeah, I don't need an MBA. If I, if I need somebody that has those qualifications, I'll just hire one. Uh, of course. So yeah. CFC 1523, your comment read, reads, well, you need money, no people with money, or get a loan. The banks give a lot more loans to people with MBAs than they do, I'm going to have so much fun with this, <laughs> than they do with a guy with a pipe dream. It's not as easy as it sounds. Anybody can be rich, but not everybody can be rich. Anybody, Every, but not everybody, is what he's saying. If, if everybody could be rich, we all would. Yeah. Well, CFC 1523. Well, hold on. Now, me, before you tear into him. I'm not going to tear into yeah, him. Yeah, I was just, okay. I'm not going to tear into him because I like this comment. I disagree with the first half of this comment, and I agree with the second half of this comment. You agree with what part? I agree with anybody can be rich, but not everybody can be rich. Yeah. I agree with that. But. Uh, that's if you think that's kind of a contradiction. It, of course it is, but I I, I, I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's a double what, negative. What it should still. say is anybody can, but everybody won't, and that's by choice. That's right. But the yeah. problem I have a, a that's just a flat out lie is the banks give a lot more loans to people with MBAs than they do any guy with a pipe dream. Yeah. Well, you know that is a true statement because if you just go to the bank with a pipe dream, you're not getting any money. True that. But if you don't have an MBA, you, get, you can that, still get a loan. If right? that pipe dream cash flows. If you've got the backing, not even the backing, if you've got the experience, if you've got the, the bank on board, if you've got some skin in the game, yeah. that's how, why SBA was created. That's for, right. For pipe dream guys. Yep. But your traditional bankers, as long as you're cash flowing, hold I don't, on, I don't hold have on. to have an hold MBA on. to get a loan. Hold on. Interrupt. Guy's going to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, we'll, that's a good one. We'll get into that in just a minute. So, back to what we were going to do today, which was talk about all these uh, acronyms and abbreviations. SBA would be a small business association. They give, sm they give loans to people who are starting small businesses. That is their job. They have tons of money that they have to give away. Mm -hmm. The government funds these things. You, you know, there's a lot of paperwork involved. Like, they got to vet you. But it, you don't have to show that you have a ton of money. You don't have to show all these normal things that people think. Um, that's what it's there for. That's what Jared's talking about when he says SBA. That's what they're there for. That's right. Now, on the flip side of that, a pipe dream, the pipe dream part, what you got to think about with banks is they want to minimize the risk. That's plain and simple. That's all they want to do. If you have money, then, then yes, they look at you like very low risk mm -hmm. because that person can pay a huge down payment. Mm -hmm. They got money in the bank. They probably have assets that cash flow. They have all these things that make make this loan a very low risk loan. That's right. But really, that's all the bank cares about. 
It doesn't care about you and, and who you are, where you came from. No, you're right. Their risk assessment is a thing because the bank does not want to become a real estate holding company. Yeah. They don't want your building that you're going to buy for collateral. They don't want to take that back from you because they're not a real estate company. That's right. They make their money based on interest points. Yeah. Right. They want to lend the money, get the money back. They want as little risk as they possibly can get. That's right. So CFC 1523, great comment. I kind of agree with some of it, yeah. kind of don't agree, but, but you do not need a degree to get a loan. Well, and the thing I kind of commented back to him was that in the context of the conversation that we were having, we were talking about real estate. Mm-hmm. And I want people to understand that a small business is different than real estate. A small business, you're not making any money. There's a lot of risk in that. They're funding your pipe dream, which is what he was kind of saying, in hopes that you can then turn that business into something that's profitable. Real estate doesn't necessarily work like that. Uh, they don't really care who's borrowing the money. Mm-hmm. All they care about is, is that real estate cash flowing? And if it cash flows enough, mm-hmm. you know, there's obviously... Or, or does your other things cash flow to cover this that's not cash flow? Right, right. You've got to you, have a global cash flow to cover the debt that you're saying you can handle. But let's just say it's your first your first deal. That's right. Because that's kind of what he's talking about. Like, he's talking about the average Joe can't do this. Sure. I, I beg to differ. Well, let me tell you, if you've got an MBA or a PhD and you don't have cash flow, you're not getting a loan. True that. Period. You could have the best degree in the world. If you ain't got a cash Period. flow, bank ain't lending you nothing. And then vice versa. That, that's right. If you have no income whatsoever, but you find a deal that cash flows crazy money. That's right. You can go to about any bank and be like, look, I only want to borrow half of what this building potentially is worth based yeah. on the cash flow. They're going to give it to you. Now, here's something I learned this week, and I'm sure it's pretty common for a lot of our listeners here, but did you know that you can apply a higher cash to a loan to drop your interest rate? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. Did you know that you can also, I think I seen the same thing, whatever you're saying, know that you can also add more to your debt for a higher interest rate and not have to come up with a closing cost. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know that. I, I knew that you could pay up, but I didn't know you or knew yeah. that you could pay down, but I didn't know you could pay up. Yeah, you can pay what they call points. And that's usually on the housing yeah, side. To drop your interest rate. But yeah. I didn't know that you could go to a bank and say, well, I'll give you another half percent interest if you pay the closing yeah. cost. Pain. And all they're going to do is tack that closing cost onto your note, add that's another right. half percent. It's that's really right. in the bank's favor to do that. But depending on what you're working on, it's it also could be in your favor because you may need that six to eight grand yeah. for closing cost for upfit or remodel. The, the problem is, is this. You know, they talk about, oh, you can, you can pay points to get your interest rate lower. But, but the thing is, the bank's not dumb, and it all, it all washes out the exact same way. All no, they're doing right. is they're saying, this point of interest, this point one of interest mm-hmm. over a 30-year term is going to make me this amount of money. You can go ahead and give that up to me up front, and I'll make your rate lower. Yeah, that's right. They're still getting their money. That's right. Your payment's just going to be a little bit less. I think it's great. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, there is a thing, and I thought this is where you're going to go, that I learned the other day that was a little bit profound. I mean, it made sense to me after I heard it, and that's don't pay a bunch down initially. Pay the minimum down. Take the higher interest rate. Say, for instance, you're buying a $100,000 property to make nice Mm -hmm. round numbers, and they want twenty grand minimum down. You have thirty. You can put 30 down, make your payments a certain amount, right? They say don't do that. They say put 20 down, take the rate you get. Even though you could get a better rate if you put more down, potentially, they're saying pay the lower amount, get the higher rate, and then take your extra 10 grand, and in the first three months, instantly pay that 100% to principal. And it's going to speed up that AM rate. Oh, yeah. Right? And so it's going to get you out of that, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that high interest yeah, stuff yeah. because it's going to put you three years ahead or whatever the number is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that made sense. No, it does. Uh, it, it goes back to the old adage. And this is when I, I mean, I, this is just basic knowledge. Make if you an extra make payment. one extra payment a yeah. year, you take a 30 year mortgage to a 22 year mortgage and you save, yeah. depending on the note, a bunch. Yeah. Just one extra payment a year. What if you made a half a payment a month? And yeah. You yeah. made six extra payments or a year. Or what if you made. What if you paid ten or three years worth of principal? That's right. The first three months. Which I would hate be like banks. Too. Ten thousand bucks. I hate banks. Yep. I mean, I love them when I need them, but I hate the idea. For, for those that are listening that may not know, I'm sure most of you guys know this already. But when you get a bank loan on a house or or piece of real any kind of real estate, 
you're paying for all that, all the interest up, up in the first 10 years. Say it's a 30 year note. You're mm-hmm. paying a majority, say 80% of that interest in the first 10 years. Yeah. The next 10 years, you're paying the other 20%. In the last 10 years, you're paying next to nothing. It would blow y'all's mind if you really read the fine print of yeah. what, you, what you're going to pay for that $70,000 yeah. truck after six years of which financing. Is, which is why, unless somebody else is paying that interest. Mm-hmm. So like in, our, in, our, you know, in a scenario where you buy a piece of real estate and you have somebody renting it, and they're, making, they're paying the mortgage for you, mm-hmm. technically they're paying that interest. Then it makes sense at some point for you to refi and pull some money out. Because you didn't really pay for that interest anyway. That's right. But normally for the average person, especially on a house, if you got a pretty good rate, you don't want to refi because what you're doing is you're starting that interest payment back over again. We're going to bring a banker up uh, as a guest. Yeah. I don't know if if corporate will allow that for a banker to come in and give a seat. We may have can to. We, uh, can we put like a mask on him? We may have to disguise with his voice. Yeah. Can yeah, we like, put one of those like. Uh, anonymous masks. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, or like the. Um, Scream. The wrestlers do I, down in uh, Mexico. El, El Note Note. What is it? I don't know. Yeah. El no no J or something. Comment El comment Libra, below if you whatever. Know. Okay. So this one we were talking about um debunking the bourbon myth, right? And so well, hold on. We're like thirty minutes in. I know you got a special comment in there for, for oh, the, about, oh, about that, thirty minutes in. Let me see here. There may be another comment that uh no, I don't. Uh, we're, we're, You'll find. Me, it. Uh, Go ahead. I'll kind of fill the space. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Let me. Uh, let's let's keep going with the. Uh, we'll do this one and then we'll take a break. Okay. Yeah. So this was about um, the bourbon debunking, right? So this is this is a good one. Yeah. The Hit King forty two fifty six. Thanks for watching the Hit King forty two fifty six. He says to be a real bourbon. It has to be from Kentucky. You can tell yourself that it doesn't all day, but every man that knows his bourbon knows it's from Kentucky or it's just whiskey. Otherwise, you're just fooling yourself. Now, yeah. I won't disagree with all that, but to clear the air... I will. I'll disagree with that. I mean, I think <laughs> in your mind, you just think, oh, Kentucky makes the best <clears throat> bourbon. Kentucky's known for bourbon. That is, yeah. that is Kentucky's... That's where it the, started. The bluegrass state. That's where it started. That's where it started. But to, to debunk this comment, we're going to say, here are the five requirements for bourbon. One, made with at least 51% corn in the mash bill. Two, aged in charred new oak barrels. And three, made in the United States. Number three, did not say made in Kentucky, Kentucky yeah. USA. Number four, distilled to a, ma- ma- a maximum of 160 proof, barreled at a maximum of 125, and bottled at a minimum of 80 proof. Yeah. Nothing in there says Kentucky. No. However, Hit King 4256, it's just a mind thing. Well, what I will say, and, and kind of to his point, and I don't know where he's coming from on that comment. I mean, he could if he's drinking Jack Daniels, and he, I, I'm not going to take his word for it anyway. Not that Jack Daniels <laughs> is bad, but I'm just saying, like when we're talking about no, his profile pic has a has a pretty little. Uh, it looks like a Stella Artois glass, but uh, I, yeah. I think this guy may know kind of what he's okay. doing there. So what I will say is, a long time ago, uh, Kentucky was very well known for bourbon because of the water source, right? So you look at the, the Buffalo Trace, you know. It, it all ha- all those distilleries are on a river. It's got the you know supposedly the best water for for making bourbon uh, in Kentucky, which is why that's where it started, and that's why you have so many of those distilleries that are right there close together. But what's happened is that you've had the craft wave come through mm. over the last say fifteen twenty years. Mm-hmm. You know, and the popularity has really grown. People have perfected this outside of Kentucky. No, that's right. And so now there are phenomenal bourbons there's a great distillery right across our state line yep. 30 minutes away uh in georgia and there's a new distillery if uh the guest on the short shout out to moonrise distillery that's my old glenn cairns uh, moonrise. moonrise out of clayton georgia yep. and then um the guy that was on our short reel there that the comment was from is actually putting a brand new oconee county's first bourbon dis- no second bourbon yep. distillery yep, yep. Um, that'll be opening by the end of the year. We'll have them back on. I'm going to grab one more, and then we're going to do a break. Well, hold on. I want to say one other point. 
And then listen, this is nothing against uh, bourbons from Kentucky because I love some bourbon. I love Buffalo Trace stuff. I mean, I love them all. But Moonrise has actually competed against those guys head to head on some of the bourbons and won. So you can't tell me that in their blind tasting. So they don't know if it comes from Kentucky or Georgia. Mm-hmm. You know, when you can beat them and the, and the best people in the world are judging these, you can't say that only bourbon, you know, good bourbon is made in Kentucky. That's right. All right, last one before the break. This was on the power of compound interest, and uh, we were just adding some useful knowledge for people that may not know. The comment from Matthew, Matthew, I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce this, Matthew Guerra, 9725. If you know all this info, why are you doing a podcast for financial gain? We're not. We, we don't do this for financial gain. We are, this is not a financial gain. We are trying to provide valuable content yeah. um, based on what we both do in real life. Well, we started off this podcast saying, hey, look, we used to have these meetings with each other just to get us fired up, talk about the next thing. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you working on? What am I working on? Who do you know? Who's, who are they working on? We used to have these meetings all the time. And you can ask anybody that you know that podcast, and they're probably going to tell you, no we don't do it for financial gain, yeah. uh, Matthew. But with that being said, we're going to take a quick break from our paid sponsor, Allstate. Thank you. Let's face it. Shopping for insurance can be time consuming. When it comes to your auto and home insurance needs, make things simple and trust your Allstate experts. They will help you get the coverage that fits your needs while helping you bundle your auto and home. Bundling saves money, sure, but it also saves you time. So you can enjoy the things that matter most even more. Contact Clemson Allstate agent Shane Smith at 864-654-1047 today for a free personalized insurance proposal. Allstate, are you in good hands? We're back. Reading comments. Reading <laughs> hate, hate mail. Are you still crying? Yes. Yeah, is... <laughs> Listen, it's on the breaks, one better. day, one day, I'm going to have all of the footage that happens on the break. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a compilation video be the funniest thing you ever seen in your entire life promise that's right that's right maybe we'll we'll monetize that one video since we do this to make money you know i mean we are dude we are loaded i forget the guy who's already said that his name already escaped me but um uh, just so you know kyle handmade the sign behind us as the backdrop we're back. making hundreds of thousands of pennies yeah and i think we picked these chairs up at the uh goodwill in uh, seneca so <laughs> now i did buy the building but uh yeah yeah He's, Jared's taking a loss because he could rent this space. <laughs> for sure. He could rent this space for... But if you would like to be a paid sponsor to our podcast, let us know. We would uh, gladly upgrade. That's right. So, okay, next comment. This is We were doing a, a short video on um, wholesaling real estate. And um, probably, if I had to guess, it was probably phenomenal It was pretty content. good content. I mean, but uh, this cat, I don't know if it's guy, girl... But uh, what's the what's to the at? I'm sick of y'all seeing my name. <laughs> Apparently, this person may have posted <laughs> enough videos where he started getting hate mail. I don't know, but it's, uh, I think that's his profession. I think he just that's what he does. She, he at, or she does. I'm sick of y'all seeing my name. Says I'm so. <laughs> this is so tough. <laughs> I don't even know what doom scrolled is, but we're gonna we're gonna go here. I'm so glad I doom scrolled for three years in my free time, and the algorithm recommended this short reel as a way of throwing up its hands and saying, quote, fine, I'll show you stuff your ass never even dreamed of thinking about. And now I've heard from Jared and Kyle. These two guys. I'm going to go outside and touch some grass now. (laughs) Well, I'm so sick of y'all seeing my name. It sounds like you when it should definitely go outside and smoke some grass. Yeah, oh, she's, touch it, grass. That person said touch grass. Whatever that means. What does S- that even mean? South Cac Syndicate podcast, making people touch grass since 2023. Yeah. 22. 22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm so sick of y'all seeing my name. We appreciate the feedback. That That's pretty cool. So I hope you comment on this short. If it becomes a short, thank you for your support. We, you know, what's funny is we've talked a lot about the one thing that we hope to get from this podcast is that we make people move, go do something. Like, hey, if it's touching grass, what? You hey. got up off your chair, you went, you went outside, and you earthed yourself. 
You became closer Grounded. with nature yeah. by touching grass. That wasn't exactly what we were talking about, but hey, if it you works. Got, you got up and motion creates emotion, man. After that, I hope you did something really cool with your life, and we appreciate the yeah. feedback. You might touch that grass and be like, man, I, oh. could, I could weave this together and sell baskets. Oh, for sure. It just keeps getting better, though. So there's another short we did. Uh, it was either with Bobby or James. Favorite place traveled in van life. That was the real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was definitely with Bobby. Wilbur Bruh. At Wilbur Bruh. Wilbur Bruh. The man in the middle of the, uh, hold on. Man is in the middle of dialogue, building up to his next question or topic. And dude, I think he's talking about you, just straight up interrupts him to ask him a question that could be saved for any other point in the podcast. Yep. Already, this is a no from me. Uh, that would be me, 100%. Well, I'm, I'm the interrupting guy. Well, Wilbur, bruh. Look, this is an ongoing thing with Kyle. We've uh, been to counseling about it. With <laughs> Podcast pa- counseling. We have had many conversations. And then there's another comment we'll get into a little bit more about this. But uh, that's just personality. We don't script. This is not TV. Yeah. We don't fake. Like, this is us. Well, I will tell you, let me kind of give you my perspective on this. You know, a lot of times we bring these guests in and they're a little bit nervous to Mm -hmm. begin with. They don't know what they're going to talk about. That's right. And if we just said, hey, you know, welcome to the podcast. Uh, Tell us about yourself. They would literally just spew everything they could possibly think of for about 15 minutes and they would run Mm -hmm. out of stuff to say. And then we wouldn't have a podcast. So my thing is, is like, I let them spew for a minute and then I want to like interject talk about what they've just talked about for a little bit, then let them talk for another two minutes, then interject. Because if you just let them go, they're going to, they're not going to stop because they don't want any dead air. They're yeah, just going to keep going, keep going until like, they're going to be like, Oh, that's my life. I'm done. You know? Yeah. You do interrupt. though. I do hundred percent. Hold, hold up. I was talking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's I, I, just personality guys. You, 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 can, you can love it. You can hate it. I'm trying to. We're working on it, though. No, we're not. I'm gonna keep doing it. It's not gonna change. Be patient. My thing is, is I feel like I'm trying to dig out the stuff you guys want to hear. So when you feel like I'm interjecting or or interrupting, it's because I'm trying to dig out the content that I feel like you guys want to hear that we'll gloss over if I don't. Yeah, sometimes, but if I don't think it'll make it out on its own. His the favorite place you've ever been to and never made it out. Nah, but to Hellbent or uh, what's his name Uh, Wilbur Bruh, he could (laughs) have waited for a minute. Let him finish the sentence. We'll get. We'll, get, we'll work on it, guys. We'll, we're going to work on it. The other, the other problem that perfect. I've had too is I've had a couple concussions, and my memory doesn't last very long. So, like, I thought of the idea of like, where's the favorite, most favorite place you ever been? And if I would have tried to hold on to it till later on in the podcast, concussions. That's the best you could come up with. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Hell Jumper seventy two hundred. This was on a video. Um, all the title is is like Chat GPT but offer sources. So I don't know what the short was. So I can give some context to this. So we were in this podcast, we were basically talking about a lot of new technology that's coming out now. It's like websites. Sure. They're all AI based websites. You can go to that can help you do a, a myriad of things. There was one in particular that was like chat GBT, but it gave you sources of where it got that information. So, you know, if you asked it to write a blog post on whatever, Instead of just writing the blog post, it would write the blog post oh, yeah, and then yeah, say, yeah. this is where I found this information. It would, it would basically give you the sources of it. Like a rep, Megan, what do you call that? What do she, you call, what do you call that in the back of a book? Like a, not a reference, but um, anyway, they do the same thing. Yeah. If you do a dissertation, yeah. you have to show where you got your information yeah. from. So it gives you, it actually gives you references. And that's yeah. what this short was about. And Hell Jumper 7200 just says, bro, what? <laughs> Like, that's it, bro. I think, I think he had a couple of concussions, too. Yeah, in a <laughs> <laughs> well held jumper 7200, bro. It's like this, man. Explore tech a little bit. Yeah. Work with some AI, and you'll answer your own questions. That's right. Because I think that that uh, 7200 kid is just kind of confused. But uh, appreciate the comment. Uh, this one is The Power of Compound Interest. It was a short reel that YouTube posted up. Hold, hold on, I'm interrupt. <laughs> oh, you know what? We are, yeah. Hold, no, hold on, I'm going to interrupt. If you'll notice, there's a theme here. Everything we're getting is from the YouTube channel. So if you're not following us on YouTube, oh, sure. go there and check us out. Uh, we post a ton of shorts. They're usually 
of the the epi- full episodes that we do. That way, if you don't want to sit and watch a whole hour, which we do, would love for you to do, um, you can just kind of go on YouTube and you get these shorts, and they're only a minute. And if they suck, you can leave a bad comment. And, I mean, if, you, and if you found value, leave a good comment. There Thumbs you go. up, it, follow the channel, whatever. That's right. This was on the Tower of Compound Interest. This was also the same video that the guy thought we were, or Matthew Gura, 9725, said, if you know all this, why are you doing it for a financial gain? Yeah. There was also another comment on the same video that says, imagine not selling all your investments to cover car repairs for 30 years. Yeah, and the way I took that was... Oh, that was Mr. Fellblood. Yeah. So the way I took this, because I don't, I don't know exactly what he's talking about, but I, I took this as... Uh, he doesn't have extra funds to invest because he's, you know, had some hard times maybe with keeping up, you know, repairs on a car or just, you know, daily life, I guess, basically extinguishes every maybe ounce of income that he's got. And he doesn't have any to invest to then capitalize on compound interest or whatever we were talking about in that episode. Maybe. But uh, if you'd like to clarify, Mr. Fellblood. Yeah. Please do. The one thing I will say is this. Uh, no matter where you're at in life, and I know this, I know for those folks that are listening that may be in the situation where he was in, it doesn't feel like this. But no matter where you're at in life, you always have those unexpected repairs that you're going to have to take care of. And, and, you know, as you get more money, you're going to get more things. And those expenses are going to be bigger. And there's going to be more of them. Unless you can control yourself. You know, some people out there, I guess, that kind of stick to the, the bones of investing and, and buying those things that then make them more money. But most of us are have guilty pleasures. And as we have more income, we tend to spend more on frivolous things that we don't need. And those things break down or we break them or they burn down, they fall down. You know, you have un- taxes, all the things, right? Like, you, the more you have, the more you, you spend. So... I get what you're saying, but, you know, just because, you know. Maybe, maybe cl- let him clarify. Maybe, yeah. Pop back on the comment. Clarify where we're at. Clarify, but also, I mean, I gotta, I'm going to put that out there because I know there's a lot of people. I was one of them. You know, I was like, man, how do you, you know. Rob how, Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. Paying this credit card off with that credit card. Not, not necessarily that, but like, you know, you try to get ahead and then something comes up. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what I found is the same thing happens no matter where you're at in life, usually it's bigger things. That's right. What does so, uh, what's it say when one door closes? Another one opens. Another one opens or look for a window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. If another one doesn't open. And I guess that's my advice to those folks that maybe feel like they can't, they don't have en- enough extra to then try to take advantage of, of the things that we talk about regularly on this podcast is mm-hmm. go open a window. That's right. Right. Look, look, for, look for your exit. Look get a, for your opportunity. Get a side hustle. Go like... It's not going to just happen. It's there. It's not going to just happen. Do your thing, guys. This one, this next one is about, we, oh, we had Craig Cahaley on. Custom clothing can be cheaper than store-bought. And a lot of times it can, depending on the store you shop at, if right? If you shop where Jared shops, 100%. Whatever. Like Highlands, if you go to Highlands to buy your jeans, you could probably get custom <laughs> clothing cheaper than you can get in Highlands. So, at TaterWin5722. No. Not Tater Win. That'd be Tate Rewind. <laughs> 57, 20, tater. tater Win. So Tater Win says NGL. That means not going to lie. Those outfits ain't it. Now, what I think Tater Win <laughs> 5722 yeah. is the, talking about is what we wear on the podcast. Probably not talking about Craig because he He's was not, dressed to the nines. Yeah, dr- Craig's always dressed to the yeah. nines. He literally came in here in a three-piece suit, That's took, right. took off his jacket, and sat down. That's right. But uh, Tate Rewind 5722, or Tater Win, whichever you prefer, says, not going to lie, those outfits are it. I think he's talking about what we wear to the podcast. Yeah. So this is what we wear most days. This is what Jared wears to, like, clothes <laughs> on, on million-dollar properties, like, but to Craig, don't. to Craig's point, he was like, I mean, if that suits you, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I'm not here. I don't work a corporate job. I don't like this is the we talked about it. If you watch the full length of Craig's podcast, we talked about today's entrepreneur. Right. We also talked about. Sorry, did I just interrupt no, no, you? <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> That's awesome. 
You did great. Um, we also talked about the better you dress, the better you feel, the better you perform. That's right. So it is a, it is a mind thing. It is sure. a mind thing. So we we believe in that. I can assure you that like if we if we need a little if we feel like we just need that little bit of uh, competitive edge, we're gonna dress up. We're gonna dress for the occasion. That's right. My my definition of dress up though is still blue jeans, button up shirt, blazer, untucked button up shirt. Yeah. Custom blazer, custom shirt. But our friend Andy Lee, <laughs> to I the mean, nines. love yeah. you, dude. He says, nobody's going to take you seriously. And yeah. I was like, they may not. I mean, if you look at the way I – you could take a guy that doesn't know anything, put him in a three-piece suit. Somebody's going to give him attention, but he's going to get lost in the room. I think there's a difference in, though, that uh, Andy needs everybody to take him seriously because of the industry he's in. Oh, for sure. Where, where – well, it's twofold. He knows a whole lot. He dresses the part. Me, I'm just, man, I just. Yeah. Well, I think it's where you sit. I think it's where you sit at the table. Mm-hmm. You know, Zucks could show up at the head of the table in a business meeting with a hoodie on. They're going to take him seriously because he's Zucks. He owns Facebook or owned it, you know, back when, he, was, right. when he owned it. Um, you know, if you're anybody else at that table, you need to be taken seriously because you want a part of the action. Then you're dressing up. And I think that's probably the difference for you is like, you know, you're not necessarily, you're at the head of the table because everything you're doing is in your, in your court, right? You, you get to make the decision whether you're buying, you're selling. Like it's nothing really matters, you know, in the instance of what you do. For Andy, it does. First impressions yeah, that's right. matter. That's right. He needs clients. He needs you know, he's representing his business. No, that's right. You're not representing his business. You're not representing a business. You're representing yourself. That's right. And it's, you want to represent, hey, I want you to know that as soon as I leave this closing, I'm going fly fishing. That's yeah. how you want to represent yourself. That's right. But yeah. I was at, I had the opportunity to meet our wonderful lieutenant governor, Miss Pamela Evett, at the State House, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, last fall. I don't remember. Yeah. And I wore dress shoes, blue jeans, untouched shirt, and a blazer. I did not wear a hat into the state house, yeah. just out of respect of our beautiful state house in South Carolina. But it, well, you did have a t-shirt and a blazer on. I don't know, I have a t-shirt. Which is true, Jay. I had a button-up shirt. And, uh, oh, you had a button-up shirt. Yeah, so I, I threw a, a selfie to Andy in the state house that, FYI, I'm at the state house fixing to meet Lieutenant Governor yeah. about whatever we were going to meet about. And he went, yeah, no, I wouldn't have wore that. <laughs> That's what he said? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have wore that. How much King Baby jewelry did you have on? Uh, I don't know that I had. Did you have anything half. hanging out? No. Rings? <laughs> no, I have my necklace usually, yeah. and uh, I always have rings on. But So what's funny about that is it, it goes right back to what I said. It's like, who's, at, who's sitting at the head of the table? When you're going to, the, to you know, her office, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. and you want to try to impress, she doesn't know who the hell you are. You just called a meeting with her. That's right. And I put it this way. So the meeting, I'm not going to get into the details of that particular meeting, but my conversation with Andy after the fact was, dude, if I was a cow farmer and I needed to meet with the lieutenant governor about agricultural issues, choping overalls. do you think I really am going to put a suit on? And the comment was, you better. And I love Andy. I just disagree with some of that because I, you put me in a three-piece suit to have a regular conversation. I'm going to fumble it all the way because yeah. I'm not confident in who you're who, acting like you are. That's exactly right. Yeah. So while I respect what he's saying, yeah. and there is truth to that, I would feel I want to be comfortable in my own skin. Not I don't want to try and be something I'm not or anything like that. Not only that, I think if you showed up to that meeting, if you're going to talk agriculture and you showed up to that meeting in a three-piece suit, you're not a blue collar farmer. She's going to look at you in a way that she wouldn't look at you if you showed up in overalls, but That's was right. very well spoken and educated about what you were talking about. That's right. If you knew your shit, mm-hmm. even though you're in overalls, she's going to be like, okay, this is the guy. Yeah. And then after the meeting, we walked into Hobbs Top House in Columbia and downtown and had a yeah. very, very, very nice dinner. And I still felt comfortable because I was still in blue jeans still and dress some shoes. Swagger going on. Yeah. I think I left my blazer in a hotel room, just kept my. Craig Cahaley button-up shirt on, but anyway. Untucked it. Yeah, so just be yourself. That's I think out of the whole thing, yeah. that's it. It really depends on the context of the, the meeting. If you're trying to impress, right, you need to dress as close to what they would expect you to dress. That's right, and there right. are there are certain requirements. If you're going to a state house, wear a blazer. Yeah. Like, please, don't, don't show up in yeah. umbros and a T-shirt, you know? So this next comment was on a video, uh, another short uh, tracking customer service. And I'm never going to get your name right, and I apologize for that. At Wacky 
inflatable arm flailing tube. <laughs> Just that tells me, like, why are we even taking these serious? Okay, wacky inflatable arm flailing tube. If it was like, if it was like Mark Krager, yeah, I'd be, I'd be like, like okay, okay, we need to listen to this dude. He, this is probably some. No, but know. this is a great, this is a great comment. He says, "I love when a video reaches no conclusion." Really leaves you wanting less. <laughs> okay. I can't even say your name again. Wacky arm something. Flailing arm, inflatable dude. Yeah. Tube. <laughs> really? So I will tell you this, and this is something that we're learning. We're, we're a new podcast. We're a young podcast. The, the I guess we'll call it AI in YouTube, just grabs segments and, and gives you the option to post or not. Yeah. Kyle watches the segment. Think there's enough nugget there to make it a short, and yeah, we approve. We don't create these shorts from beginning to end. That's a YouTube thing. And if there's one gold nugget in it, we'll post it. Yeah. Right? So the beginning it, may be half a sentence or the end of the last sentence, and it may cut the next sentence off, but there's going to be meat in the middle that would be worth watching. Yeah. So what I will say is, say we do an hour-long podcast, and then it creates 50 shorts. I might, if I'm lucky, grab 20 of those because they actually make sense and they tell the story. Now, it may not tell the whole story, which is also kind of what I'm after. Like, I don't want you to just watch the shorts. I want you to go see the full context of what we're talking about in the episode, right? That's how you, you're not, I'm not going to be able, there's no way you're going to be able to compact everything into one minute and you get across, we get across exactly what we're talking about. It's not going to happen. That's right. So I want to give you enough juiciness in that one minute where you're like, oh, you know, these guys, you know, pretty interesting. They're wearing T-shirts and a dress, you know, they're wearing a dress shirt and, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Like, I don't know what it is that may attract somebody to the the podcast, but we're not trying to be somebody we're not, uh, which is like, well, we don't try to be fancy on this thing. We're just trying to give value where we can. We don't know everything. We're trying to figure it out, which is why we bring a bunch of guests on that know way more than we do. And, uh. You know, if we can give you a juicy nugget, it's like, man, these guys are kind of interesting. I might go check them out. And you go over and watch the whole episode. That's what we're after. That is that is the whole thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we didn't get in this thing to be YouTubers. We got in this thing to be podcasters. Yeah. yeah. And just to kind of tell our story and add value back to, to the world. To be honest with you, my thing is I told Jared in the very beginning, I don't care if nobody watches this. I think it's cool that we document this process because what's going to be crazy is when we go back and watch these later on. Jared says he don't like to watch them now, but one day when this is over and done, if it's successful and we pass it on and there's hosts that actually know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm it. They dress right. Me and him are yeah. going to go back and look at some of these episodes and be like, dude, you remember when we talked about this or we talked about that? Yeah. This, so the next comment, I think this is our last comment. Um, somebody went way back here. This is uh, when we had Rabbit on yeah and so for those i I don't know this might have been episode seven and uh it was certainly one of our very first episodes but rabbit has his own netflix series called tex-mex tex-mex motors yep tex-mex motors he is an out the most outgoing guest we've had on the podcast kudos to rabbit for the success he's had with netflix just bought a building start another um what you call it? Classic car dealership, uh, Co- like uh, yeah. hard to find car dealership yeah. in uh, Seneca, South Carolina. Yep. Super excited to have him relocate out of Greenville to Oconee County. Yep. But uh, we'll get to the comment here from at Blues Boy IJ Two RB. Where did these names come from? Who knows? This is this is <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> oh, Blues Boy took some time here. <laughs> All right, guys. It says. Every, so I think what he's doing here, and I don't think it has anything to do with the short. No, this is a full video. So what he's doing here is is giving us advice on how to make our podcast better. Oh, okay. He's a podcaster himself, I assume. Maybe. Everyone needs to be closer together. The guests are too far away. There's too much fitting, fidgeting with phones. Looking around, probably not necessary to have two hosts at all. Better having one working a couple of cameras going back and forth between guests and host, perhaps a more interesting backdrop. Other than that, it's not too bad, Eric. Yeah. Eric, for one, thank you for the feedback. Yeah. And this was an old post. This was about seven months ago. So yeah. I can tell you, Eric, nothing's changed. <laughs> we got a sign. That's we it. got that's a all, sign. That's the only thing that's changed. Probably. And uh, we've addressed Kyle. I've already made that. But um, 
We do fidget. And so I'm glad you can't see under the table because my feet are, do, you know, always moving, tapping. I'm glad you can't see under the table because you ain't got no pants on. Yeah, whatever. Well, they're shorts, okay? <laughs> I wear shorts, you know. Uh, since COVID, everybody kind of wears underwear and then a T-shirt, whatever. Yeah. But uh, it's just, um, man, everything's 100 miles an hour in this room. Yeah. Even if we're not podcasting, this is the idea room. This is where we create businesses. This is where we talk ideas. This is like there is a vibe in this room. Yeah, yeah. And so it's always going to be a lot of, a lot of fidget, fidgeting. Now, I will tell you this. Two cameras, multiple angles. I can, this is how close we are. Like, we're close. And, like, and honestly, the guests, like, if I was fist bumping, we could fist bump the guests. They're not yeah. that far. So or I can touch the end of the table. Right this, is, this is a, it could be a camera angle thing, but. I, I'll tell you got, what it is. It's a wide don't angle. Inter, don't interrupt. No, I'm going to interrupt. Don't interrupt. <laughs> so what it is. We've talked about upgrading equipment. We've talked about more lighting. We've talked about backdrop, but we're not we're not there yet. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it uh, at the beginning of the podcast. Why are you doing this for financial gain? It takes it actually takes a small investment to start a podcast. Yeah. As we grow, um, we put our money back into equipment. So the more sponsorships we get, or we have literally whatever, but, we've literally talked about upgrading the video. Since the inception of this podcast, yeah, but podcast it and video cast, video cast or video cast. That's right, that's right. So, and I also don't feel like people like me personally. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. Put it in the comments. But like, I do watch podcasts on YouTube, but I it's like watching in the background. Like I'm listening, you know, doing something, and I might look over if somebody's making mm-hmm. a gesture. If they're talking about something, they're making a gesture. Yeah, or if they say. You know, they're they're handing they're putting something in front of the camera, or they say something, right. or if I just want to see who I'm, who's who I'm listening to. You know, some people just want to see who the hell they're listening to. That's right. That's right. Right. That's right. So we so put a face to it. We put a face to it, but it's not about like we're not trying to entertain you on the video here. No, but I mean, we could. We could. Now that this is my thing on the whole on the whole thing. Like we we started this. We're like, look, let's make sure this thing has legs first before we put a ton of money into. Equipment and this, that. let's make sure that we have like more it's than the our, same thing we would do looking at a new business. Yeah, exactly. Same exact thing. Let's exactly. try and kill it before we invest. Yeah. We'll find all the reasons it won't work. And if it still works, then we throw money at it. Yeah. So we've been doing this. What episode is this? 47, 48? Yeah, 46. Yes, somewhere in there. Almost 50 episodes, right? Yeah. So a little over a year. That, which is crazy. We're once a week, and we also take vacations separately with our families and stuff, so we're not here every week, but we try to be, right? And we've talked about doing backlogs of uh, pre-recording, but we just like doing it and releasing it the next morning. Yeah. So, what, I, what I will say is, what would you rather have? Super polished, but we sucked at what we said? Like, it was... Yes, today... Well, we're, we're not going to be... Right? We're not going to do that, but... It, no, or... Would you enjoy listening to what we're saying and the video not be the best video in the world? Yeah. Eric, a couple of things. I want to know what you do that you had time to watch an hour and nine minutes with Rabbit because I love <laughs> that episode, actually. It's, yeah. it, it, it's tough to love Rabbit and us and all in the same room because Rabbit is a ball of personality. Yep. We're a ball of personality most of the time. It's tough go bannering back and forth, though. So... Um, you, you let us know, Eric, what you'd like to invest, and we'll be happy to give you an equipment list if, if you can kind of help that. We That'd can send great. you all the footage. You can edit it if you'd like. But all BS aside, sincerely, we appreciate the comment and, uh, and the feedback. And so that pretty much wraps up our comment section. Yeah. Uh, but we've asked for, I mean, so long to give us feedback. And so we <laughs> literally just took all the That's feedback and made an episode. Well, we didn't do any of the good comments. That's right. There was a bunch of good ones, and we thank you guys for those too. But but you can find us on YouTube at South CAC Syndicate and subscribe, follow, share, whatever. Yep, comment. And if you have an interesting career or you're an entrepreneur, email us at southcacpod at gmail.com. Fly in. We'll bring you to the studio. We'll buy your drinks, and we'll do an episode on you. And then the more traction we get, obviously, maybe the advertisement in the middle. I got to give a shout out to Shane Smith at Allstate because he has been true. one of our number one sponsorships for almost a year. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Shane, for keeping the light on over here. We appreciate you. And uh, if you'd like to be an advertiser on the podcast, let us know that as well. That's right. Shout out to Liz next door at the West Coast Tap Room. room. 
Yeah. She don't really give us anything, but she good service. Good I guess. service when she's working. She's not working today. That's why I have to go right. and get my own beer. She was. I saw her shotgun and beers earlier. That's Liz. Oh, guys, thanks so much for listening. Welcome to Waha, South Carolina. Come see us. Holler at us. Email us. Let us know what content that you will find value. If you want to be a guest, let us know. If you if you have a friend that's interesting, uh, that you think would be great content, hit us up. Email us. YouTube us. Instagram us. South CAC Syndicate. We just started TikTok. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kyle did start a TikTok. Check out the apparel company, SouthCAC.com. It's uh, fixing to blow up. We're redoing all of that. So going to be interesting. Thank you guys uh, for the negative comments, the positive comments. And thanks for watching and listening. To the next 50. See you soon.